Welcome to this week's lecture in Scientific Programming in Python, which is about pandas. Um, this lecture bases on the awesome Python Data Science Handbook from Jake Vanderplas, which is available as a Wiley book. And uh, then you have all the notebooks here. Um, it bases heavily on that. However, we delete some stuff, add some stuff to make it fitting for this class. OK, so what is pandas? Pandas is um, the natural follow-up to NumPy because what Pandas does, it, it takes NumPy arrays and basically adds behavior onto them. So Pandas is a library for fast and efficient computation on big data sets. And as in NumPy, many operations in Pandas are vectorized and thus efficient and fast. So it's a newer package built on top of NumPy and has this implementation of series and of the data frame. And what, so the Pandas package, simply what you're always going to use on that is your basic panda structures, they always come in two flavors, data frame and series. A data frame is a two-dimensional array with labeled axes. So in other words, a data frame is simply a ND array where the number of dimensions is two, so a matrix of rows and columns that have labels, column names for the columns and index labels for the rows. And then you basically have, in these you have rows, and one row is basically then a one-dimensional number array with access labels, and that is a pandas series. So what pandas basically does, it, it takes a numpy array, either one-dimensional or two-dimensional, and adds these indexes onto that, as well as additional behavior, like for example, um, being able to work with these data frames like you would work with normal databases, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's perfect to work with any kind of experiment data of data in general. So if you're doing data science as well, you're always going to use pandas data frames as long as you don't have that stuff on TensorFlow or on the GPU or something. Um, and it's perfect for all that kind of stuff. So data frames are multi-dimensional arrays which attach rows and column labels, uh, often with heterogeneous in contrast to number arrays and are missing data. So pandas is also really, really good at handling missing data and working with missing missing data. Um, so yes, it provides, for example, the same behavior as if it would, as if you would use a database or a spreadsheet program. So for example, relational algebra, joining two data sets, two data frames, or just taking the difference of them. This is all what Pandas is really good for. So Pandas was originally made for time series data, and you can still see that in the structure of Pandas because it generally want, like, you can easily index stuff with dates, for example, as you do in time series data, but you can use it for any type of data. And like I said, in pandas, you can have inside the columns, you can have different data types. You don't need this strict typing. You don't have this complete strict typing as in an upper array that every single element of a matrix must have the same uh, must have the same data type. But in pandas, only the columns must have the same data, data type. OK, so yeah. Um, so it goes over the limitations of NumPy and uh, works perfect for, for example, this stuff where you want to do operations, but then still want to keep that index. Because this index, it's the only thing in like boiling, the, boiling down to the real difference of pandas and NumPy, the, that pandas data frames and series have this index is basically the main thing that separates it from a normal NumPy array. But this is also what makes it really, really powerful. So it builds on NumPy arrays, but has additionally this stuff um, with the indexes that makes your life as data scientists or generally working with data much, much, much easier. And this is why we're looking at pandas now. Okay, um, because like I said, pandas relies on NumPy and uses NumPy. Normally when you import pandas, you also import NumPy because for example, the missing values are always uh, numpy.nan, np.nan. So um, you always wanna um, additionally import NumPy when you're importing pandas. And just as NumPy is normally NP, Pandas is normally PD. So now that I told you what series and data frames are, let's start by creating series. So series, one dimensional array of index data. So it can easily be created by simply calling the constructor of that um, with some collection, for example, uh, Python list. And we see this here, np.nan, like I told, is a missing value. Now, when we execute it, we see, well, first of all, it renders nicely. And second of all, we see pandas automatically adds the index here. So index 0, 1, 2, 3. And this is a series with the data type float64. Um, if we look at the type, it's a pandas series. And if we look at the values, where well, we see the values. So using dot values, 
we get the underlying number array. I told you underlyingly it is a number array, and we can get this number array using series dot values. And we see that actually is a number array. Okay, so why is this, by the way, float 64? Um, well, first of all, we have um, float numbers in here, but even if we didn't have float numbers, um, it would be float 64. And that is because it always takes, so it automatically coerces into the least common denominator of so the type um, of the data in here. And because np.nan is float, this will always become np .nan is, uh, float 64 as long as you have np.nans in there for missing data. Okay, and just as the data has values, um, the data also has the index. And this is what I said, so it has some other thing. And the index is a range, a range index. So starting at zero, going until four with a step of one. Um, it's a special kind of index. So if you don't specify an index, Pandas will automatically add this kind of range index to it, which is basically the same as if you would index a normal number array. So it starts at zero and goes until whatever you want to. And you can simply convert that into a list and then in a, in a list it, it's, it looks like a normal, how you would expect it to look. However, this is not, this is not always the case and you can change, the index can be set explicitly. Okay, and just like with a number array data can be accessed by the associated index using the familiar notation. So this year, um, uh, this year is a slice and if we have slice in there, we exclude the last element. So we take the first two here um, the type of data at this position is numpy that's float 64. And these are all the um, attributes and methods um, our data has. So there are quite many. Okay, now we have two ways of how we can see what a panda series is. We can either see it as a generalized numpy array, generalized in the sense that this is a numpy array which additionally has this index, which is some different explicit thing or we can see it as a specialized dictionary where we basically where the index is the key and then whatever is the value for the index is the value so we can see a series either as generalized number array or a specialized dictionary okay so so far it looked like it was only a number array so like i said we have the index and that can be explicit and we can also explicitly define that so this index doesn't need to be an integer but can be any kind so if in the constructor of our series, we provide the index here as keyword argument, uh, then we have a, b, c, a, b, d, c uh, as our index. And we can even re-index. So we can set data.index equals something, and then we have a new index here. So now it's a, b, c, d, where the b is lowercase. And now we can assign using this index. So instead of data at the position one, we can say data at the position b equals and that is the same as data at the position one. So we see here um, that we have, um, this here is the explicit index, but we still have the implicit index. So we still can look at it like it is a NumPy array. And we can also look for data.values at the position one, and this is still true. So this is like a NumPy array, but with this index, so it's a generalized NumPy array. Um, so now we have numbers as the index here, but not in a, some order. So we don't have this range index, but if we look at what the index of data is now, we see that this is simply an in64 index. And when this explicit index is present, it is preferred as long as we don't slice. So if I take data at the position three, what am I getting now? Am I getting this where the explicit is inde index is three? Am I getting this where this is basically the third element, 0, 1, 2, 3? I am getting this one. So the explicit index is preferred. However, if I slice data at the position 1, 2, 3, um, now I see I'm getting this is 1 and this is 2, and the third one is excluded because this is how we slice. So if we slice, then we use the implicit index. And if we simply use get item without a slice with a number, we use the explicit index. Okay, then you even can note that explicit index don't need to be unique. So if I simply concat concatenate my data to my data, so p.concat, now we have 
my data twice after each other, and we see that it's 3724, 3724. Now, if I try to get deep two at the position seven, what am I going to get? I'm going to get both of them. And if I assign a value to this, for example, so using the set item method here, now looking at it, I see that it changed actually both of these values. So this one and this one. So indexes don't need to be unique in pandas, explicit ones. Next to this, like I said, you can also see a series as a specialized dictionary. So a structure that maps arbitrary keys to arbitrary values. However, this, this time the values are not arbitrary, but the values must be of the same data type, so typed values. And this typing is important because it makes it far more efficient than a Python list. Okay, so um, this analogy can be even made more clear by us being able to create a series from a Python dictionary. So as argument to our series constructor here, we provide a dictionary and now we have a series that uses the keys well, as keys, as index, and the values as values. Now, if I say popul population at the position Texas, I get the value of that position. So this is just like a Python dictionary, just more efficient, and the fact that I can have more values for one key. So uh, first of all that, and second of all, unlike a dictionary, the series also supports every style operations such as slicing. Now we are explicitly now, I said before that when we're slicing, we use the um, implicit index, but only if it's numbers. So if we slice with the explicit index here, so this is obviously not the implicit one because this can only be a number. Um, and if we slice with the explicit index, then this works. And then the Illinois is included. So if we're slicing over explicit indexes, the last element is included. So this is better than a dictionary and also some yeah, specialized, but also gen more general because I can slice and I can get more values, put more values onto one key. Okay, how do we create series? Um, well, first of all, we could, for example, also provide a single number. Uh, so I showed you some ways before, but we can also provide a, a single number as value and provide a list as index. And now it will put all of these here, um, for so the number five for all of these indexes. Um, the data can be a dictionary, I showed you that before, and we can also convert our series to a dictionary. So this is to dict, so we can convert our series, um, well, we can get the number array out of this, or we can make it to a list. So list, uh, to a dictionary, list, dictionaries, whatever you want. You can see it both ways. Having talked about the series, now let us talk about the data frame, which is the next fundamental structure, like the series object, this again can be seen as either a generalization of a NumPy array or a specialization of a Python dictionary. So now let's look at both of these respective um, perspectives. So as a generalized NumPy array, why is this a generalized NumPy array? Well, because we have a one. So if a series is a one-dimensional array with flexible indices, then a data frame is well, a two-dimensional array with both flexible row and column index names. Um, so basically a data frame is a sequence of aligned series object. By aligned, we mean they share the same index. So basically, basically you make out of the first series, you make the first column, out of the second series, you make the second column, and thus you made from two series, you made a two dimensional thing, which we then simply call data frame. And that's it. So um, let's first construct our series here, like we did before. Um, so we had, um, the uh, population dict here already and now we also have the area dict here and now that we have both of these we can simply create a data frame where we say column population contains the series population which we created before and the column area contains the series area which we created right here so this creates a new data frame with three columns and those are these three columns and the last value is usa for all of them which is basically the same as uh, when we created it like this. So we have an index already, and please put USA into all these indexes. Indices. And now, when we um, return this, this is what we see. So we see that Jupyter renders them nicely. Um, if you would print it, it wouldn't look that nice. Um, but because Jupyter and Jupyter is nice, um, Jupyter renders this even uh, nicely. Okay. And now, if we look at the D types, we see that. 
where we have individual D types for each of these columns. So this here is an int, this here is an int, and this here is an object, so strings are objects. Okay, so now a series is basically, a, a data frame is basically a two-dimensional thing where each of the um, columns are series and we have, well, these in, this index and this index, columns and indices. So this looks like a generalized dictionary. We have for this one key, we have, well, we can make a second key and then we have, or we have three values for this one key. So the keys are the name of the state and the values are basically a list, area, country, population. All right. So we can, for example, what we can do on this, we have some operations. We can sort the values by population. So now we well, have sorted it by population as uh, descendingly. And if we now look at our column population, we see that this here is simply a uh, series. And even it, it tells you, so it's of type pandas.quoted series of series. So for all the columns, we have a series. Okay, um, more stuff, more methods we have from that. So we can, for example, get basically, this is like the argmax from NumPy. So the index of where population has its, max, has its max and the index here is California. And then to get the series at the given index, we'd have to look at the states at the location where this index here is, right? So state this here returns an index and states at the location index is the series at the index of the maximum population. Okay, this is something different as if we call it state.max, which exists because, like I said, pandas lies on NumPy, and because NumPy has this .max method, pandas has two. But we see here that this returns the max for every individual column. So this is how you would get, for example, well, the, the row uh, where the population is max. This is the maximum of every individual column. So, yeah. So now let's get slowly to indexing and we see that state at the position California doesn't work. This is because if you provide one single value um, for the get item method of a data frame, this must be a column name and not a row name. If we want to get um, our data frame at a column name, we have to use this dot location. I'm gonna get into uh, more of that later. Okay, states.index, so this here is the left index, which, oops, the left index, which we see here is an attribute, states.column is just as much an index, so we have two indices for the index for this and for this. States.values, a two-dimensional number array, just what we expected, except that now it needs to, so if it makes a number array out of this, it needs to coerce all of these two objects because the lowest common denominator of all of these three columns is object because these here are objects. Now if we look at the table of this, type of this, it's still numpy.md array. So data frame can be thought of as a generalization of two-dimensional number errors um, where we have a generalized index in both rows and columns. Similarly, we can think of a data frame as a specialization of a dictionary. So when we try, so we ask for the area attribute of our data frame and this returns the series object containing the areas, right? So again, indexing a data frame without the dot lock, it always gets the column. And the type here we see is a pandas series. So for every column, we have a pandas series. All right, how do we construct data frames? Um, so we have a variety of ways. So first of all, we, create, we can create a data frame from a single series. So remember we have a series here, population. And so we can simply make a data frame out of this. So we provided the series and name this column population. And now the index here basically stays the same and the row index, um, the column name is population because we named it like this. We can create them from multiple series by simply concatenating them at x is equals one. So x is equals one. Um, so many pandas functions take this x as argument and this is either zero or one and zero is the same as the string index and one is the same as the string columns. So we can just as well say x is equals columns. And now this explicitly says, well, please concatenate these two series, but concatenate them at the columns. So please make something with two columns out of these two series with one column. If I would um, use index here instead, I would simply append them to another. But in this case, this is not what I want. Oops, um, columns. I could create um, a data frame from a list of dictionaries. So now we see we have 
dictionaries here, the first one has the keys A and B, and the second one has the keys B and C. And now we can provide this list of dictionaries to the constructor, also provided with an index, and what it's gonna do then, it's gonna, um, well, make for both of these, so first of all, it's gonna create obviously two indices here, because we told it to, and then it's for these values, which are only there, for these keys, which are only there in one dictionary, uh, in one of the dictionaries, yes, for the other one, it will simply say, where well, this is missing data, np.nan. So even if some keys in the dictionaries are mission, panda, missing, pandas will fill them with nan, not a number, a missing value, because pandas use this is nan for missing values. Okay, as every single column must have a consistent data type and nan is a float, um, where we must coerce our numbers even though they were integers here into floats. Now if we get data from the position A, where we get this, position B, we get this, and the type of np.nan, like I told you, is float. So if we have D types, this here is float, this here can stay int because in this column we didn't have any missing values, and this here must be float as well. If we wanted to get the rows, pandas would need to coerce the numbers explicitly. So um, we see that um, where this here was an int before in the data frame, but now that we want to get the rows, pandas must must um, coerce these numbers. So two is now a float because we wanted to get uh, the, the row of this. So naturally, um, you can basically, like I said, imagine it the series uh, in a data frame being in the columns and not in the rows. So for pandas, it's natural to get the columns out of these data frames, but not that natural to get the rows out of it because there it has to convert and coerce as we see here. Okay, and the last way I'm telling you how to create um, a data frame is basically from a two-dimensional number array. So we have a number array, which is two-dimensional. So for example, we have six by four random numbers here, and we can provide it with an index and with the columns. Both are simply a list. And now I told you pandas is made for, um, originally for time series data. So for example, you can simply make a date range, which starts at, 2000, at the 1st of January, 2013, and is six days long. And this is then our index. So now we have the 1st until the 6th of January, 2013, as our index here. And as our columns, we could, for example, provide simply A, B, C, D. So this is also how we can create it. All right. And now, uh, because I was told that it's nice to have exercises in um, our lectures again, I will give you this exercise here. So I don't do anything. You can just pause me right here and I will um, start again with a solution right after you pause me. Beep. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. So we have our X um, data and um, well, let's make a p dot uh, data frame out of this. Now this is already pretty nice, um, but we also want the XM data in there. So we can simply run um, well, df equals and then df at the position qualifies equals and then our series qualifies. So first of all, let's don't forget the index here. Okay, um, this is one way, um, just as much we could have done uh, like this. So this here gives a dictionary and what this here does, this is a special syntax to make one dictionary out of two. So we unpack both of these dictionaries into a new dictionary. This is this syntax here. Uh, so this works just as well in one line. I told you I like one liners. So these are two ways uh, to produce um, the given dictionary. All right. Then the last thing for chapter one is the pandas index object. So we have seen that both the series and data frame um, contain an explicit index that lets you reference and modify data. So the index itself is a really interesting structure. It's basically some kind of a mutable array. So if we look at this, where this is, looks like an array does, but we cannot mute it, mutate it. So it's an immutable array. And we can basically provide this index object explicitly to the constructor of a series or data frame. Uh, index objects also have names. So um, we can provide the name with the dot names attribute. So we see that this is names and this is a list because we can have hierarchical indices. I'm gonna to get to that later. But if you have single index simply 
remember that it's called names instead of name. Now we see here where well, this now has a name. And now if we create a series with this index, um, we see that this series be even has a name. So the name of the series, so it looks like this is the name of the series, wherever this is basically the name of the index here. Um, we can do the same thing here, and if we make a data frame out of this, so now it has a named index. Um, this is sometimes what we want, sometimes it's not what we want. Uh, so what we could do is df.index.names uh, uh, equals none. And now um, it doesn't look like this anymore. Yeah, index objects have um, attributes, as we know, so size, shape, number of dimensions, and a data type. However, um, it also has other attributes, like for example, I can do set operations on this, which is what Pandas does internally often. So if I have two indices, I can, for example, uh, look at the uh, union, the set union of these, or um, exclusive, or however this is called, of these dictionaries. And this is really useful because the union is what Pandas often needs when it tries to merge two data frames which has which have different indices, because then the resulting in the, um, data frame, for example, only wants to take those ones. Well, first of all, from these, it doesn't want to take the union, but the or. Um, but the union is also needed in many cases in pandas. So it's useful for pandas to have um, indices that allow for set operations. OK, as much for the first chapter. Next up, we're going to talk about data indexing, selection, and assignment.